Welcome to Roughing It With Ruth, the channel where everything is a bit rough around the edges. I recently got back from my trip to hike the Fish River Canyon in Namibia, and I just can't bring myself to make my usual format video listing all the pros and cons of this destination. There definitely are pros and cons to hiking the Fish River Canyon, but the truth is that I loved every single second of this hike, and if I'm not careful, I'm just going to spend 20 minutes absolutely gushing about it. I have just about enough self-control left to realize that that's going to be pretty boring for my viewers, so instead, here are a whole bunch of tips that I think are important for hiking the Fish River Canyon. Before I get into the tips though, I'd like to address something that was bugging me when I was doing research about the Fish River Canyon. Why is it that there's such vastly differing opinions about how hard it is? Well, obviously the more prepared and the fitter you are, the easier time you're going to have. But it also has a lot to do with the conditions in the canyon at the time that you hike. When I hiked, it was extremely dry. This meant that river crossings were a non-issue. We never even had to get our feet wet. If you're hiking when there's been more rain and the river is higher, you'll probably have a totally different experience. You should definitely keep this in mind when reading other people's reports about this hike. In other words, don't treat these tips as gospel. Right, on to tip number one. If you're making use of the shuttle from I Ice to Hobas, then take all of your warm clothes out of your hiking bag and put them on as the trip starts. It's an open air game viewing vehicle and it can get pretty cold. Also make sure that your hiking gear is very, very secure in the vehicle. It shakes around a lot and there's a lot of wind and you don't want to lose something at this point in the hike. And on that note, make sure that you take your medical form, conservation declaration, and cash for the conservation fee with you to Hobas. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to even start your hike. Try not to start your descent too late in the day, because the hotter it is, the harder it's going to be to hike. Your very first steps on the Fish River Canyon Trail are going to be down a very steep gully that leads you to the bottom of the canyon. I think this is why so many people complain that the first day is the hardest. It's honestly not the hardest. It's just that you have no time to get used to your gear on more even terrain before you're expected to negotiate some fairly challenging slopes. So please don't make the Fish River Canyon your first overnight backpacking trip. You have to get used to your gear beforehand and know how to move on uneven terrain. I'm not saying the gully is easy though. You do need to be careful because your muscles are not yet warmed up and taking a tumble here could lead to serious injury. Also have a care not to get tangled up in the chains that are there to help you climb and try to make sure that the gear that's tied onto the outside of your backpack is not going to hit the ground and unbalance you as you're moving. Once you're in the canyon, keep in mind that there's not always going to be a clearly defined path to follow. Even if your general direction is fairly obvious, you are going to have to do some pathfinding around obstructions. Do keep an eye out for the white kilometer markers painted on rocks though. And speaking of pathfinding, Navigation is not quite as easy as just follow the river. There are numerous shortcuts for you to choose from, but you have to do your homework to know which ones are worthwhile and which ones aren't going to make any difference to you. A GPS is extremely helpful. Just make sure that you know how to use it and that you have enough batteries or an extra charger to make sure that it works your entire trip. Don't rely on being able to get cell phone reception in the canyon. Make sure that you have offline versions of any maps you want to use downloaded already. The lack of cell phone reception should make this obvious, but I'm going to say it anyway. You have to be able to be self-sufficient for the entire time that you're in the canyon. This means that you absolutely have to take a first aid kit. Even a small injury can become pretty serious if you don't have one with you. You might also need to modify your gear unexpectedly, for instance, I had to cut the waterproof lining out of my boots to let trapped sand escape. 
Ah, yes, the sand. It gets into everything. I never thought that I had to be concerned about sand before I started the Fish River hike, but it is actually quite an irritant. It got into my shoes and they normally fit me perfectly, but they suddenly started giving me blisters. It gets into your gear, it gets into your food, and it was one of the major reasons why I decided not to use my top tent and to instead share a tent that had a sewn in ground sheet just to have a little bit of sand free time at camp. Here's a picture of the first and only night that I used my top tent. And while we're on the subject of camping, remember that there aren't defined campsites along the Fish River Canyon. This is why some people can do the hike in three days, some in four, some in five, and some in six. So don't force yourself to camp before you're ready. Just find a nice spot that agrees with the distances that you're able to do per day. Other than dealing with the sand, I think the biggest challenge for me personally was the heat. I really recommend waking up as early as possible so that you can start walking as soon as you can see. You want to try and get as many kilometers done before about 11 o'clock, when it honestly feels like you're inside of an oven. A hat is also essential, and you do need to be able to carry enough water with you to make it through the shortcuts where you're not going to be next to the river. I'd say about two liters should be okay. Also make sure that your water is accessible to you the whole time. You don't want to have to keep asking somebody to take off your pack and give it to you. If you're hiking in a very dry season like we were, then you're probably going to want to filter the water. The one place I really would not recommend drinking the water from is at Palm Springs, which is also known as Sulphur Springs. You can, however, take a rejuvenating dip in the warm water, safe in the knowledge that the terrain from this point on gets slightly easier. Of course, easy in the Fish River Canyon is a relative term. There's still plenty of sand and plenty of cobblestones. And you're almost certainly going to have to hike longer distances per day in order to finish the trail in time. If all of this is sounding a bit daunting to you, you probably want to know about the emergency exits. The first one that you'll come across is just after the walls of Jericho. But I must be honest, I have not heard very good things about this one. And even from the bottom, the path looks pretty treacherous. I also suspect that it's not actually patrolled at the top as I have heard stories of people being stuck waiting for help with no water. The only other emergency exit that I am aware of is just after the 67 kilometer mark, the causeway at the Pink Palace. This is supposed to be patrolled once a day, so it's probably your best option. Although there isn't a whole lot of vegetation in the canyon, do keep your eyes peeled for wild animals, such as these beautiful wild horses. I'll cut out the narration for a while so that you can appreciate the beauty of the wildlife in the canyon. So should you do the Fish River Canyon? Absolutely. Just make sure you prepare properly beforehand. Thank you so much to everyone who went on this adventure with me. Thank you Lawrence, Eva, Ephraim, Rose, Susan, Hilke, Jill, Dina and Inna. And Ralph, you were a rock star. You always tried to make sure that my camera was straight and you were the best water filtering buddy around. Thanks for an awesome hike.